Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial series on momentum and collisions. The topic of this video is the impulse momentum change theorem. Here's what we wish to learn today. What does impulse mean? What does impulse do? And what does the impulse momentum change theorem tell us about collisions and explosions? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, we learned that momentum is a concept that we can use to analyze collisions and explosions. In this video, we will learn about the impulse momentum change theorem, which is the first of two accounting methods that we use to analyze collisions and explosions. A collision force will always cause an object to change its velocity, that is to speed up, slow down, or even change its direction. Let's consider for a moment the task of bringing a football player to a stop. It would require a combination of force and time to stop that football player and bring its momentum to zero. It might be a big force for a short amount of time, or maybe even a weaker force for a longer amount of time. But the combination of force and time is what we refer to as impulse, a force acting on an object for some amount of time in order to change that object's momentum. Mathematically, the impulse is defined by this equation, impulse equal force times time. Now when you think about the unit of this quantity that we call impulse, it would make sense that it would be a unit of force multiplied by a unit of time. And indeed it is. It's the Newton multiplied by the second, abbreviated N times S. During a collision, a force acts up on an object for a given amount of time, that's what we call impulse, in order to cause a momentum change. That is, an impulse causes a momentum change. But it's a lot deeper than that, because the impulse is actually equal to the momentum change. That is to say, F times delta T equal M times delta V. The left side of this equation is the impulse. The right side is the momentum change. When we break it down into variable symbols, the F is the force acting on the object. The delta T is the collision time, the time over which that force is acting, and it's often very short on the order of milliseconds. The M is the mass, and the delta V is the velocity change. So this equation is known as the impulse momentum change equation. In a collision, impulse equal momentum change. But it's nothing new if you've been through Newton's laws. Because in Newton's laws, we spoke of the second law, which says F equal MA. Now, if we were to substitute into this equation for the variable A, acceleration, we would put delta V divided by delta T. So the equation becomes F equal M times delta V divided by delta T. And then if we were to multiply both sides of that equation by delta T, we would end up with the impulse momentum change equation, F delta T equal M delta V. So this equation is a new way of looking at an old idea. And we apply it to collisions like this. We think of impulse as a means of either removing or adding momentum to an object. So as an example, let's suppose we have an object with 60 units of momentum initially, and then there's a impulse of positive 20 units. That impulse is going to change the momentum. So if it was once 60 and then it has an impulse, it's something else now. So with a 20 unit impulse, it would cause the object with 60 units of momentum to end up with 80 units of momentum. Impulse equal momentum change. Here's another example, but this time it's removing momentum from the object because it's a resistive impulse. The object starts with 60 units of momentum, but this time the impulse is negative 20 units, and the negative simply indicates against the object's motion here. And so if we have negative 20 units of momentum of, of impulse against the motion, it's going to remove momentum from that object. Instead of it being 60, it's going to change by negative 20, and it ends up with 40 units of momentum. Now, a large impulse does not necessarily mean that there's a large force on the object, because impulse has to do with a combination of force and time. To illustrate, let's consider the task of stopping a football player, an 80 kilogram football player, moving at 10 meters per second. The momentum change is often calculated as the mass, 80, multiplied by the change in velocity, and the change here is from 10 to 0, so that's a change of negative 10. The momentum change of the football player is, 800, is negative 800 units. So so we need to have an impulse of 800 units, 800 newtons times seconds, to stop it. And it's a resistive impulse, so I put a negative 800. 
So somehow I'm going to have to get an impulse of 800 units to stop a football player. And there's a variety of ways to do it. And here's the first way. You could have a force of 800 newtons for a time of one second. That would provide an impulse of negative 800 units and that would stop the football player. Or you could have a weaker force of negative 80 units, and it could last for 10 seconds. And together, the 80 times 10 gives us an impulse of negative 800. That would stop this football player. Or we could have a big force for a short time, like 8,000 newtons, a big smack on that football player, for a short time of 0.1 seconds. That's enough to stop a football player that has 800 units of momentum. Or it could be the big hit in football. I mean, bam, 80,000 units of force and the lasting for a really short amount of time, like 0.01 seconds. And that would be perfect for stopping this football player because it multiplies to negative 800 units of impulse. So when we analyze a collision to determine the momentum change, we will always go final momentum minus initial momentum, or simply go mass times velocity change, where the velocity change delta v is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity. We're going to use this idea to analyze two contrasting collisions. The first one is what I call a hit and stick collision, where a car is moving at 10 meters per second, hits a wall, crumples up, and stops. It doesn't rebound backwards. So there's a velocity change here from 10 to the right to zero. We'll contrast that with the second collision, which is a rebounding collision, where a car is moving at 10 meters per second to the right, hits the wall, and because of an elastic bumper, rebounds backwards at negative 5 meters per second. That's a velocity change of negative 15 meters per second. So when we do our calculations of velocity change, momentum change, and impulse, we end up with this for the hit and stick collision. The velocity changes from 10 to zero, that's a negative 10 meters per second, multiplied by the mass of 1,000 kilograms gives us a momentum change of 10, negative 10,000 meters per second. That requires a resistive impulse of 10,000 units of impulse. Let's contrast that with our other situation of rebounding. In, in the rebounding collision, the velocity change is now negative 15. We go the final velocity of negative 5 minus the initial velocity of 10. That's a negative 15 meters per second velocity change. Multiply that by the mass of a thousand and you have an impulse, you have a momentum change of negative 15,000 units of momentum change. That requires an impulse of 15,000 units directed leftward upon this car, a resistive impulse. So when we contrast these two collisions, we notice that the bigger momentum change and the bigger impulse is for this hit and rebound collision. That it's a resistive impulse of negative 50, uh, resistive impulse of 15 15,000 units greater than that for the hit and stick. And this explains why we design cars to hit and crumple up in front end collisions. It results in a smaller impulse and less damage to the passenger. Thanks for sticking with me till the end of the video. If you liked it or found it helpful, could you give us a like or subscribe to the channel? Maybe even leave a question or comment in the comment section below. Here's an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. You'll find a concept builder, a set of calculator pad problems, and a tutorial section on our website that dovetail real nicely with this video. Any one of these would be great for furthering your learning. Links in the description section. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and thanks for watching.